Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, and today is our second day of Calgary Board of Education Week here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. As I said yesterday, all week we are going to be looking at the other election that is happening on October 18th. Actually, there's a few elections happening on October 18th, but this is the other important one that you should be getting out to vote for as well. That is the Calgary Board of Education trustees are up for re-election as well, along with your municipal councillors. So today we are welcoming Ward 11 and 13 candidate, Miss Nancy Close. Nancy, thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. Even just our pre-interview there was an honor and a pleasure. So thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. Total pleasure is mine. Uh, Nancy has told me that she is a, a watcher of the show, so she knows that the first question is going to be coming down the pipeline here, and it is, where's your sense of duty to serve come from, Nancy? I had to talk to a lot of people about this question, Chris, um, but I finally landed on the two values that drive me and drive every action I take, and it's a uh, sense of community and building community and student success. So I'm passionate about both of those things. And also, uh, I have a six-year-old granddaughter uh, that I feel it's really important that I stand, I model uh, to, that you stand up for what you believe in. And I believe uh, public schools create that sense of community and create student success. You can give back in many different ways. You can give back through volunteerism. Uh, you can give back through nonprofit organizations, but you've decided to give back the, the elected way, the political way. Mm -hmm. why, why is your voice, because we won't go get into it now, but uh, for those who are listening and watching, Nancy was an elected representative for the Calgary Board of Education from 1999 to 2007. She stepped down or uh, retired, and then she's back at it again. So why come back? Why come back now in 2021? What is it about 2021 that makes you say, you know what, this is the, I need to get back into it because there's things that are happening that I don't like. I actually have a long answer for that because if I've... you didn't, it would be a really bad interview. So let, let's <laughs> hear the long answer, Nancy. Because I struggled with this, Chris. Um, I know how hard the role is. And um, so what I'm thinking is that my previous experience as a school board trustee but even more important, um, my experience for the last 10 years working in Mayor Nenshi's office as his community relations coordinator. So I've led files on poverty, homelessness, uh, civic engagement, um, but also mental health and addiction have all led me to believe that I've, I've got to step back in because I do think that public, public education or a system of a strong public school system is, is at risk. And so there's been a couple of things that, uh, that have led me to that. Um, but I wanna start here for a second. In 2007, when I chose not to run again, um, I actually felt that school boards were uh, powerless and without authority. And not that uh, we didn't do good work because I think we did because we actually uh, created uh, what's called a results policy now. So we galvanized a whole system around student success. And we were pretty proud of that. But the last 10 years have made me realize that local decision making does matter, and that you can be effective. And I think uh, we need leaders at the school board level, and we need representatives, and we need advocates. And so that's why I'm stepping in. And there's probably three or four reasons that have, have really convinced me one, unfortunately, is the CBE review. I think the CBE has been reviewed three times, um, once before I became elected as a school board trustee, once during the NDP provincial government, and then just most recently with the UCP government, and likely because education is your biggest budget or one of the biggest budgets along with health. So it always seems to be reviewed, but I'm tired of CBE always taking the hit when I know that they do great work in schools. So the CBE is parents, the CBE is students, it's at teachers, it's staff, it's administrators, all working together, all people who care about student success. And, and I'm tired of them being 
reviewed as if they're doing something wrong because they're actually doing really great work. Can it be better? Absolutely. Um, the other piece, and I hate to, to bring this up in some ways because I know how difficult it was for our elected school board to be under review and under the threat of dismissal. But when your community comes forward to you to ask for the name change on Langevin School, to answer that you don't have a policy on it, to me was such a disappointment. I really felt that um, as representatives, as leaders, they could have stood up and responded to their community and done, done the right thing. And they did eventually, but I think it was because of public pressure. Um, there's another reason that um, it's more around the systemic issues. Uh, the, in June, on June 22nd, they were at the school board meeting, they released their student accommodation report. And, they, and this is a biannual report, but it was all about the potential school closures that are gonna happen over the next couple of years. I've been through that emotional roller coaster. I really believe that school co closures shouldn't be inevitable. I wanna have that conversation around um, who builds schools, who owns them, who uses them. We have schools in our communities that are empty during the summer months, and I don't think that's right. So I'm really excited about the possibility of bringing people together to have a conversation around a community building that houses a school. And so I'd love to be able to, I, I'm not sure I know the complete answers yet, but I'd love to be able to have that, that conversation. So it's. It's those types of issues that have really driven me to, to uh, step forward. And, and last but not least, well, there's two things. The draft K to six curriculum, uh, every door I'm at, uh, is, if that is raised, um, I'm really concerned about who has developed it and who hasn't been involved in developing it. And then, um, mental health and addiction. So for the last two years in Marin Entry's office, I've worked with the city of Calgary to, to and our community to develop a community action plan on mental health and addiction. This is a conversation that keeps coming up as well. And we know that the best place where our kids needs can be met is in schools. And so I'd love to carry that work forward. So all of those things have, I just realized as much as I'm nervous and excited about it, I felt like I had to step back in. Um. You have talked about five things that we will be discussing during this interview and how the school board can help address these issues. Um, but you mentioned it briefly there for a second. I want to get this side of the story out there as well. You talked about the draft K-6 to curriculum, and you talked about how when you're door knocking, this is what you're hearing. Um, any candidate for any elected position should be door knock should be door knocking right now, and if they are not, they should be trying to engage because of COVID numbers yeah. being raised. What else are you hearing from at the doorstep from your neighbors, from the people of Ward Eleven and Thirteen, about our school system and how the Calgary Board of Education? can address it in this upcoming term because I know you will be getting elected one two months almost two months and being sworn in two months after the school year starts specific to the curriculum how to address it specifically or any to issues? any issue I want to know what you're hearing at the doorstep because we'll talk about the curriculum later on but I want okay. to know what are you hearing okay. because I want to know if they what you're hearing at the door lines up with what you're telling me of these five issues so I don't know if I influenced that conversation, but yes, it does totally lines up. Um, and I'm really super excited that this time, probably uh, more so than ever, in, uh, people are talking about public education and they want to talk about public education. So they're not turning me away from the doors. In fact, when we're door knocking, one of the questions that we ask is, share your concerns or your accolades around public education around the CBE and people start talking. So this is top of mind for everyone. And I'm, and I'm also relieved to hear, for the most part, people are really happy with their schools. And that's good news, I think, because I think we can further expand how we involve the community in the decision-making that CBE does in order to support student success so that the next time it's reviewed, the community will actually stand up and say, hey, you're wrong. 
school school boards are usually the forgotten uh, elected politics of uh, any uh, province municipality. Um, it is really a specific area of politics that only some people will engage with because they have kids in the public school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you, we talked about the draft K-6 curriculum. This is a provincial issue, but also a school board issue. The Calgary Board of Education has come out and said, in its current format, we would not pass this curriculum. I think 98% of these school not pilot. Uh, yeah, yeah, the pilot it would not pilot. Thank you so much for the clarification there, Nancy. Um, about 98% of the school board said they would not pilot this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, school boards take their marching orders from the province. If the province goes ahead and passes this curriculum as written, which hopefully they don't, you will have to implement it. How hard mm -hmm. would that be for you to then have to go back to your people who are voting for you to say, hey, I don't like it, but this is what the province wants and we have to adhere to what the province wants. Or is there another method that the school board can take to challenge this? I think there are two methods to challenge it. One is um, through the role of advocacy, is that you, you have to continue to make some noise around um, what is appropriate for the development of, of children and the curriculum that Calgarians want. So if we're elected, representatives of Calgarians, we have the, the right and the responsibility to voice that with the provincial government. It's such a fascinating, you know, when you go into grade six classrooms and you talk about uh, local government, because often they study that at, in grade six, school boards is, is the example of not local, not provincial, it's in between. And, and so, yes, everything that school boards do, everything that uh, school administrators do. Um, the responsibility and the accountability lies at the provincial level. Um, believe me, no decision is made at the local level that's not overseen. But if we're still elected as representatives, we have a responsibility to voice the concerns that, of the people that we represent. So advocacy, making some noise, for sure. I think the other avenue is is we know that uh, although again, locally developed curriculum has to be approved by the, the provincial government, that is another avenue that we can uh, pursue. Um, but I think really it's through advocacy of, of what we would like to see for our children's education. Um, one of the areas that you did not mention, I wanna get your opinion on here because it is sort of hand in hand with parents and how people are addressing uh, the reality that we currently live in is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 is rearing its ugly head again. We are looking at a fourth wave. If not, we are currently in a fourth wave. Yeah. Uh, for, for my listeners and my viewers, we are recording this on August 30th. This is coming out on October 5th. So things could change, but kids are going back to school right now. Kids are mm -hmm. heading back to school and the CBE has announced a mask mandate for kids. Uh, before I get into COVID-19, I want to ask you this question. I've asked every other candidate who has been on the show would you have supported the mask mandate that the CBE had voted for in the last Absolutely. few months? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Let me, let me back up for a second, because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> okay. And you have to balance the, the needs of everyone when you make those types of decisions. And I'm a big believer in the common good. And so when you have so many kids under 12 that aren't vaccinated and perhaps staff members, the best mitigating tool that we have is wearing masks indoors. But the other most important thing we need to do because of COVID is we have to get back into school and we have to keep the schools open. We need a full year of, of people learning together. Um, and so to me, the decision that they've made um, is the best decision that we need to make at this point in order to start school but they're going to revisit it at the end of September and, and maybe revisit it again uh, in October because we are in that fourth wave. And I think, I think it's the most responsible um, thing we can do to keep everyone safe and keep kids in school. And Chris, I've got to say, um, 
and and you've, you're hitting on an emotional spot for me today because uh, I I've been getting probably five emails a day from people that don't want to wear masks that want to end the mask mandate and I'm struggling with those emails um, because because I have empathy for people and and have and want to build a community and want to listen to even diverse points of view. Um, it's hard when when we're witnessing a situation where where we're not um, thinking of the whole community and I find that difficult. Um, I, I, and this is probably a tough subject to talk about, but I still need to address it because it is something that parents are talking about. Mm -hmm. I have uh, nieces and nephews who were in uh, virtual uh, schools last year and they're going back this year and there's concern. Um, yeah. So I, I have to continue this line of questions. So I do Absolutely. apologize. Absolutely. I know you talk about empathy. I know you talked about empathy there and I appreciate that, but uh, you will be elected to represent everyone, not mm -hmm. just the people who vote for you. Mm -hmm. How do you have empathy for the people who may vehemently disagree with you on this issue? Because you will have to represent their them and their children in the school. And if you say, yes, I think the mask mandate is needed, they will disagree with you and they're and we are seeing a very divided pol political mm -hmm. arena that we are currently in when it comes to masks. How do you envision yourself doing that, balancing out the needs of the many against the needs of the few? I'm sorry to quote Star Trek I here, think, but... <laughs> no, no, this is good because, because this is why I'm struggling because I recognize that they care about their kids as much as I do. Yeah. It's just we come at this from, from two different points of view. So I'm not going to argue the scientific evidence. I'm not going to argue... Um, uh, what's right or wrong, but I can argue that for everyone's mental health, we need to have our schools open and this is the best course of action. So there's going to be lots of times when, when, and I've already said it in emails that we have to agree to disagree. I appreciate them sharing their point of view, but we disagree in the are, course of action. Are people open to that? Because uh, whenever I say we will have to disagree to agree to disagree, <laughs> the, the next email I get is usually not a happy one. So in your opinion, do um, people for, understand that people have different opinions? I would, I would say for three quarters of the emails that I'm dealing with, the next response is, I won't vote for you, but good luck in your campaign. Good for them. The, Political the court, discourse 101. Exactly. And a quarter of them are proved to me because you're wrong. You know, like they still want to engage in the in the debate. And, and I don't see that as beneficial. Uh, I, 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 I want to hear them. And that's important. As I've said in the past, and this stays on the long along the lines of dealing with uh, your constituents as an elected official. Okay. School board trustees usually while we think that municipal uh, politicians get uh, a lot of things dumped on them. School board trustees have a unique perspective because they are dealing with the education of our children. They are mm -hmm. the front, they are uh, in trying to ensure that the uh, our children are educated properly, are safe, but also are well taken care of between eight and four or whatever time the school is in session. Um, you will be bombarded with questions at the mm -hmm. grocery store, at events about this, that, and the other. You did this for eight years as a school board trustee. I, I'm gonna ask the question because I've asked this to one of my other uh, school board trustees who I had on a few years ago. And she said, I would never have done it if I knew what I knew now. Why come back? Why come back into it? Because you are putting yourself out there in a public way again. Yep. And we are in a more divided time than when you left in 2007 because public schools are that important to our community. Okay, understandable, public schools are important, but you will have to be representing a lot of diverse opinions at the school board because everyone believes they have their children mm -hmm. are the, are, mm -hmm. should have the best quality of service and best quality of education provided. 
how do you how do you envision working with your fellow trustees to ensure everyone has good public education because i talk to my family members who are in school and their parents and they say the school system is falling apart there there needs to be changes do you agree with that statement i disagree i okay. think i, I love think... it i love it i love when people disagree with me <laughs> I disagree because because I think and we can be better. So here's okay. here's what's motivating. There's two things that are really strong motivators for me. One is and naively so, it's very important for me to build community. And the polarization that we're witnessing in our society is is distressing. But we're all human beings. So so I do I'm probably of the age where it's even more important to, to make sure that we are building connection and sense of belonging. So huge motivator for me. Uh, it drives, drives everything, everything I do. As far as student success goes, I think where the CBE can be better is that they can't address all of the barriers to student learning by themselves. So when we talk about systemic racism or we talk about poverty or food insecurity or homelessness or English language learners, there are hundreds of community social service agencies that do great work and are just waiting to be doing even better work in our schools. They're already there, they're already partners, but I think we can have st stronger collaborative partners and we can have different conversations on who does the work, how, and when. So it's it's not a, a question, like I think the CBE can be more open in, in um, and that's why I get excited about talking about a community building that has a school in it versus a school. Like we have to break down those silos. So I think if you're seeing, or if people are discussing the, the challenges that they're seeing for their individual students, it's because we're not meeting their needs or, or addressing the barriers to their learning. And that's what motivates me and why I'm back in the game again. Um, you talked about mental health as well. And this is going to be a unique year that we are going to be mm -hmm. going into. For all of like us. A, for all of us, for teachers, for staff, for mm -hmm. kids, for uh, mm -hmm. parents. Um, how do you envision the Calgary Board of Education helping kids, helping families with their mental health in this turbulent time? Many ways. So right now, I know that there's this wonderful collaboration that's going on with the Matheson Research Institute, CBE, Calgary Catholic, and the City of Calgary, uh, focused on how can we address um, identification actually of mental illness between the ages of 12 and 18. And, and, and teachers will be able to notice that right away. So I'm not sure, I don't think anyone's exactly sure yet exactly what that's going to look like, but to even have that conversation happening is huge. It's going to make a big difference for kids and their families. So when we talk about mental health, it's usually about challenges in access, and we can increase access to not just your formal Alberta health services. I'm sorry, you're probably hearing my dog bark. No um, worries. You'll probably see my dog probably come <laughs> around here. For those who are watching, they know Robin quite well and they know the perks of Zoom where anything could happen. So exactly. No, I, exactly. I was listening. <laughs> So I think, I think access is a huge issue and one of the things that we've heard and I think student voice is gonna change that. So, so we've done some really great engagement developing the community action plan on mental health and addiction. So it's, it's a game changer. The school board is there. They're, they're willing to, to participate. They know that the need is there and they know that there's other experts that can help them. Um, you, I'm just going through the list of things that you talked about in the opening statements. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about this one because you were the first one I've talked to, first school board trustee who's mentioned Levine oh, School oh. by name. Uh, I think that's, uh, Langevin. Yeah, sorry, Langevin uh, School by name. Um, it took the CBE a long time to change that name. There Too was long. public, there was public calling, there was, there was calls from the public to rename that, I think, 
two and a half years ago, if I'm yep. not mistaken, if not longer yep. before that. I might have been even four. Exactly. I, I'm going to ask the question. Politics moves at a slow space, pace. Things don't happen overnight. As much as you want them to happen overnight, they don't. You have to ensure that you are addressing everyone's needs. If there was a situation like this that came up again, how do you push forward and make the, that change and make things happen in a faster pace? Because this should not have been an issue four years running. It should have been a one month issue where, hey, Totally. This, this name is a racist name. I apologize for anyone who's listening who does not think that, but it was. This mm -hmm. gentleman was a person who did bad things. And it took the school board four years to change it. How do we change things in a faster pace than this? So two things come to mind. One is um, as soon as the truth and reconciliation recommendations came out, um, they should have been read by our school board representatives. And they would have recognized right away that one of their responsibilities is school naming and they could have addressed it right then, but they didn't. I think another way is, is that we have to discuss what the role is for school boards. And there's been such a push uh, likely from the province to be governors through policy of the CBE. But you're also elected as representatives and advocates. And, I'm, and I know I've said that before earlier, Chris, but this is the push I'm going to bring is that we need to talk about um, what is our role and agree on that role and, and, and implement it. Um, I, I want to make sure I ask this question because I know one person who is an avid listener always asks me to, if this comes up to ask the follow-up question. Have you read the Truth and Reconciliation Report? Yes. What in there would you want to see implemented in the school board on day one? Well, the school naming piece, absolutely. So um, I, then the, the, the follow-up to that is and I don't schools... I don't have a position yet. Like, like I have a, an initial position, for instance, on Sir John A. Macdonald uh, High School uh, or school that, that maybe, maybe we don't need to rename it, but do we need to talk about it? Yes, we do. So to, me, so to me, it's not just changing the names. It's, it's actually respecting the truth and recognizing the systemic racism that's embedded within our system and addressing that. And I know CBE is doing that at the administrative level, but what power there would be at the school board level to have even board development sessions, engage your community, bring in experts and have those conversations. I, I appreciate your honesty and candor talking about that. I just wanted to ask the question mm -hmm. and I am not trying to be the no, person no, who well. asks the tough questions, but these are, you, I, I let the guest, if anyone's who's listened to the show, I let the guest uh, dictate the way that the uh, conversation is going to go. I welcome this, Chris. Like this and, uh, is part of who I am. Awesome. One, uh, the other issue that you talked about was school closures. No parent wants to see a school closed because yeah. their their kid is literally going to that school and they don't want to be crammed within a larger classroom. But we are living in a pandemic. We are living in a time when revenues are down. The province is, is looking at potentially cutting costs and saving money. So the money comes from the province, from the school board. Yes, it comes from the residents of Calgary, but it comes mm -hmm. from the province how do you how how can you tell pe uh, parents of children who are currently going through the CBE that I will fight to ensure that no school gets closed in a pandemic when revenues are down? I I don't think that's the question. I What's think, the question then? I think the question is how do we fund the operation and maintenance of school buildings? Okay because operation and maintenance funding is driving school closure decisions. So right now, um, the province will only uh, provide 100% of the operation and maintenance funding to schools if they're at 85% utilization. 
what does 85% utilization mean? What does that look like in a school? Does that mean you can still have your music classroom, your library? Um, what does it mean? So to me, the, the instigator of school closure decisions is the wrong instigator. It's around program. Are we delivering the right program? Are we meeting the needs of the students? Does it, cost is part of that, Chris, you're right, you know, because the smaller the program is, if you've got a school of 80 students, that's obviously gonna be the most expensive program that the CBE is delivering when you talk in, in those terms. And so, so yes, I believe, you know, there will be program closures or school closures, but to me, we have to reframe the whole conversation around what do we want our school buildings to look like and who should be there? So if it, so if it is about operation and maintenance dollars, years ago, we, would, we, were, we had the ability to uh, offer leases and reduce the capacity of buildings. And the province has recently changed that rule. And I'm concerned that a, school, a closed school is a new charter school. And I'm not sure that's the way our community should head. I should have asked this question at the beginning of the interview, but I'm going to ask it now because you just mentioned the, the C word, charter schools. What does public education mean to you? Um, that's such an interesting way to frame the question. I'm going to dally for a bit. No, understandable. I, I know that the province defines public education as public schools like the CBE, separate, charter, francophone, independent or private schools. That is their definition of public education. Um, when charter schools were first implemented, how many years ago, um, I almost supported the idea of provoking innovation through charter schools, but I now get a sense that the vision for public education in our province is, is, is a collection of individual schools. And I believe very strongly that we need a system of public schools so that we can welcome all kids and all kids can be successful. So my definition of public education is publicly funded schools that accept all students. The follow-up to that is, do they currently now? CBE does. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for answering that question. I just wanted to make sure that I, I, I should have asked, I literally should have asked you that, the like third question, but this is the great thing about this show. I can do what I want because I'm <laughs> the host. <laughs> uh, I, I, so we, we are at about... 32 minute mark. Oh my goodness, sh- that's too long. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. For everyone at the cross border interview. <laughs> okay. uh, I want to talk about uh, October 19th. October oh, the day 19th, after. The day after the election. If you have listened to any of the municipal candidates uh, line of questions, you know where I'm going to go with this. Let's jump in the time machine. You are the newly elected trustee for what? Ward- 11 and 13 uh, right. you you get the green check mark beside your name on election night from global ctv or whoever it is what is priority number one for you oh to get to know the other uh elected trustees because we're actually a school board can't do anything without them and so my priority one would be a working relationship commitment um Yet again, the follow-up to that is, okay, that's great. That's great. Getting to know people is awesome. Well, you told me like the day after, that's what I would no, do. No, no, and understandable. Now this is the follow-up to that. Okay. 100, 100 days into your first, your, your term. So this is your, let's put yourself in February now. What metrics are you going to put in place to ensure you have done things that will better the CBE, that will also ensure that the parents know that you're working for them, but also that you're open to hearing from the people of Ward 11 and 13. Uh, engaging the community, that we've changed the role of the school board to deliberately, effectively, and meaningfully engage the full community. So right now they do a great job 
with school councils and school development plans, but I'm talking about our broader community, the grandparent down the street, but also the city of Calgary as a strategic partner that can make a difference and community social service agencies, the broader community. To me, that would be the end goal. Awesome. Um, my last question, I want you to look directly into the camera. I know you've been doing that for the entire time, but I, I, you, when I have people, I point to the webcam, but I can't do that for you. But look into the camera, talk to the people of Ward 11 and 13 who are listening to this because we seem to be getting attraction of a lot of people tuning in every day for these shows. So I want you to address them. Why should you be the next school board trustee for the Calgary Board of Education for Ward 11 and 13? Go ahead. Because I care and I'm motivated and I'd love to have the opportunity to revisit and reimagine how we all work together for student success. Um, as uh, a journalist or a sort of wannabe journalist, I, I, I can ask you all are the, a journalist. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can ask all the questions I want, but there's going to be that one person yelling at me saying, why didn't you ask this question? So I'm going to ask you this. How can people ask you questions? How can people reach out? Oh, How can people easily. get involved? There you go. How can they do it? Easily. So website, nancyclose.ca. Phone number listed on the website, 403-470-0379. No one's phoning me. I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. Um, email nancy at nancyclose.ca and i'm out in your community um i'm at, i'm at your doors um, i'm available uh for my listeners and to my viewers nancy's website i'm gonna say this instagram twitter facebook page email address i probably will not link your phone number so if you want you have to rewind it and listen to that number <laughs> but those will be in the show notes Please, 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 if you live in Ward 11 and 13, get out, get engaged, get educated for the education trustee, because at the end of the day, if you do not vote, do not complain. I'm going to beat a dead horse here over and over again until the end of this campaign. Get out and vote. If you want something changed, if you want your morals and your values represented your way, at the school board trustees, at the municipal elections, get out and vote. There is literally 13 days left in this campaign as of this airing October 5th. So please, 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 please get out and vote. Nancy, this has been an honor and a pleasure, and I wish you all the best in the upcoming election. Thank you election. so much, Chris. Thank you so, so much.